What's up guys, it's Landon, and today I'm going to show you how to do something that I think is really cool. So yesterday I finally got this cable in the mail, and what this cable does is it links this Xbox 360 Connect with my laptop. Now why would you want to do that? Well as it turns out, you can actually use your Connect as a 3D scanner. Now you can scan just about anything you can think of. You can scan full rooms, you can scan you know, smaller objects, you can scan people. Um, and you can 3D print these scans, you can put them in video games, in Unity or Unreal, um, but there's just limitless opportunities available and all you need is a connect, you need this adapter, and I've included both of those in the description, um, and you need a computer with a reasonably specced graphics card. Um, and so in total, this project only takes about $30, $40, and so as long as you have the parts, easy project to do, and you can do some mind-blowing things with it. But uh, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. So you're only going to need five things for this project, and I've included links to everything you need in the description. First, you need an Xbox 360 Connect, and these are only $20 to $30 if you don't already have one. You're going to need an Xbox 360 Connect power adapter, and what that does is it converts the proprietary cable to USB, as well as powering it. You're going to need a decently specced computer. I'm using a Razer Blade with a GTX 970M, but any computer with a dedicated graphics card should do the job just fine. And you're going to need two pieces of software. The first is Scanect, and what that does is it converts the raw data from the Kinect into 3D objects, and you're going to need the Kinect for Windows SDK, which allows the Scanect software to communicate with the Kinect. So to download the software that you need, click on the link in the description and it'll take you to this website. Now this is the Scanect website, and it includes both the Kinect for Windows SDK and the Scanect software that you need. Now I'll be using the free version, the non-commercial use only version, but there are some limitations, namely uh, you are limited to 5,000 polygons in your image and I'll show you what that means later on. Um, but just scroll down here and download it for whatever software or system that you're using. Um, and so once you click on it, it'll automatically begin the download and you just install it like you normally would install software. And then when you scroll down, you'll see that there is the Connect for Windows SDK. And then you just click on that, and that will also automatically download and install. So once you've gotten the software downloaded, go ahead and open Scanact after you've installed the SDK as well. And you're greeted with this Prepare page. Now click on New, and then you have all these options that you can choose before scanning your object. Now you can choose object if you're scanning just, you know, just uh, any range of different objects, a room if you're scanning a whole room, and a body if you're, you know, scanning a person, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but the bounding box is very important. So the bounding box, the bigger it is, the less accurate your 3D scan is going to be. So for a head, I found that 0.4 meters actually works perfectly, because the head still fits within the box, but it's still high resolution. So once you've gotten it how you want it, go ahead and click start, and then you should be able to see what your Kinect sees. So I'm sure you can see me now, and you're actually seeing the depth of the Kinect. So as I get closer, it turns red, and as I back up, it turns blue. So once you're at this point, now all you have to do is just click record, and uh, I'll demonstrate how to record a 3D scan uh, on my brother, and we're going to go ahead and cut to a time lapse. So after it's done processing, which is, which is going to take about 20 seconds, you can see the final result. And as you can see, this actually looks really good, especially for an 8-year-old scanner. Now the bounding box actually cut off uh, some back portions of his head because of how big the bounding box was set. I was too far back. Um, but just make sure you kind of watch out for that. But other than a couple of holes right here, it looks really nice. Um, so I think that this turned out great, but there are so many other options you can do to improve the 3D scan. So if you reconstruct it, you can actually go um, and use your GPU, and the GPU will uh, go through all of the data all over again, and it will um, basically compile it into a more accurate 3D scan. Now, it is a little finicky when it comes to how well it tracks, 
Um, but uh, I'm just gonna set it to high and run. And it does take a minute um, for it to go through all of the data. But as you can see, it's reprocessing the data and see there it actually lost the position. And I'm not sure why it does that, but if it does that, then I would just stick with the original live recorded 3D scan. So let's cancel that. And then once that cancels, let's go to process. And what processing will allow you to do is it'll allow you to fill in those holes that you don't like. So in the process tab, there are many options to improve the final result. And what I like to do is make it watertight, which will fill in those holes that I didn't like. It's also going to colorize it, but sometimes that doesn't work too well, especially if the reconstruction doesn't work. That means that the colorization is probably not going to work as well either. Um, but that doesn't matter, especially if you're going to 3D print it. Um, then you you know you can't print it in high detail color anyway. Um, but that's pretty much it. So once it fills in these holes, you can remove the color, and then I'm going to show you how to export that file into something that you can view in the 3D Builder application on Windows 10. So now that it's finished calculating the watertight mesh. You can see that it added the colors back, but it was not without some issues. So once you remove the colors, you can see that it actually filled in those holes in the back quite nicely. It does look like hair, and you can see that there's a small indentation there, but it's not too noticeable, and it provides um, a model that you can 3D print. Now, there are other options that you can play with, but I like to simply watertight fill, uh, and then I like to export the model. Now, as I mentioned before, um, the free version only allows you to export models um, up to 5,000 shapes. So I like to export it as an STL because that's easily viewable in the 3D Builder application. And once you export the preview, name it to whatever you like, and I'm going to name it Chandler. Save it where you want to save it, and it'll export the model and then you can open that model in your 3D Builder application that comes pre-installed on Windows 10. So once that's done, you can minimize this and you can open up your new model. And so I actually think that the 5,000 shapes looks really cool. It gives it that artistic polygonal look that I like in the artistic games. Plus it'll look cool when you 3D print it because a lot of 3D printers don't have the accuracy required to make it look exactly like the original you know, model anyway. So once you have that exported, you're pretty much done. You can take this model and you can export this model to a 3D printer and 3D print it. Um, you can export the model into a video game because you can do full body scans as well. Um, and uh, it's just fun to play with. You can even import the model and you can paint the model as well. So, um, after you repair it, because apparently it needed to be repaired, you can add colors to the object on each shape, which I find very funny. So you can paint the whole thing a color, you can lower that coverage and paint it specific colors. So if I wanted to paint his hair blonde, I could do that. But overall, it's just really fun to 3D scan just about anything you can think of. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and it allows you to do things that you wouldn't have been able to do before. Well, that's it for today's video, but I really hope you enjoy turning real-life objects into virtual ones using a scanner that's been around for eight years and is only around $20. Um, but if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, you know what to hit. But if you love this video and you want to see more tutorials, more unboxings and reviews, more tech news updates, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified of more videos in the future. And I also want to know, what do you think I should improve in my videos? Is it the lighting? Is it the audio? I know that I need to improve both of those, but I'm just really having a hard time grasping exactly what I need to get right to make a great video since I'm kind of new to all this. Um, but if you also have any ideas for what videos I should post in the future, maybe different types of tutorials, anything you want to learn how to do, maybe different types of reviews on products you're interested in, let me know and I will try my hardest to do videos on those subjects and on those topics in the future. But like I said, I hope you enjoy 3D scanning any object you want and uh, I'll see you in the next one.